James Vincent Knuff came here in 1904, did the very first cabin that you come into. He uh, built the first cabin in 1904 and they stocked the lake in that. Uh, they stocked Paul Lake in this lake. Those were the first two that were done in the entire province. And this lake actually produced larger fish than Paul Lake did, so they, it's, they put the milking station here, and they used to milk them right here at the bridge, and the 26 pound, four ounce, was the largest documented by the ministry. They called them Walter, and that's what people still fish for. Long gone, but <laughs> they still fish for them. It was first stocked in May of 1917, when uh, approximately nine mature rainbow trout were taken from, a, from Paul Creek, between Paul Lake and Pinatan Lake, and transported by horse back uh, and stopping at creeks along the way to supplement the oxygen. It took them a few days to get the fish up to Knuff. My husband and I always took our kids camping. We've been to a lot of different resorts and we came to this one here and we looked at it first and it was in pretty bad shape at that particular time, so let's hit the road and go see what else is up there. So we headed way into the interior and up north, and we looked at five other resorts. Don, he thought, you know, um, let's go back to Knuff Lake. He liked the idea of the sun rising first thing in the morning right till the evening. You get sunrise at 4.30 in the morning, you get sunset at 8.30 at night. Like if you do the math on that, that's about 16 hours of daylight that you're actually getting here. We came here and thought, no way, man, it was really bad. It was in receivership for quite a few years and roofs were off, the floors were rotten, you know, this kind of stuff. So it was really grim. The only thing we did like is standing here with our back to the place and looking out at the lake. It was beautiful with the islands and everything else, very peaceful. Don, um, basically as a tugboat captain, we had a shake and shingle business up in Tum Tum at one time in our life. And through all those years, Don's learned great old backo. He's an electrician, he's a plumber. He is a renaissance man, yes he is. He's, I always say he's one out of a thousand. Coming up 52 years in March, so we've been together for a long time. Um, she's very artistic, so she sees things different than what I see, and I'll, I'll see the basic bone, and she'll take a paintbrush, and all of a sudden that bone becomes something totally different. So it's, a, it's a, I think, a good combination. I do the, the building end of it, and she'll do the finishing or decorating end of things. He just doesn't stop working. He just sees it, he sees more in his ideas than I can, can think about. It was a lot, a lot of work, but mm, my husband just fell in love with it and thought there's no problem, he could do it, we could do it, and we did. The cabins themselves, when we walked in, they were dirt floors. They were oil driven. They were sinks that were in there that were just uh, no reason for them to be there other than a bucket at the end. The logs themselves, you couldn't see that they were logs and the roofs were leaking, the porches were rotten. Yeah, the cabins were fairly original. They, they, the first one was built in 1904 and then they, we have a picture of Lakeview being built in 1932. Um, and you can see the other cabins in the background. They're solid wood when we put in new furnaces and this type of stuff, direct vent uh, propane furnaces, and we cut into the logs, they were like brand new inside, you know, just brand new wood. So we sanded them all down and varnished them, and, you know, which brought them back to life. Well, these are still very rustic, uh, you know, straightforward cabins. They're, like I said, they were built a lot, a lot of years ago before there was actually much plumbing or anything like this. So we kept them fundamentally the same. We uh, cleaned them all up, new porches, uh, but we tried to keep the same design. There's about four different log builders, I believe, that have built here. So whatever they originally did, I copied to try to keep them the same. It is a lot of work, but the work is done. 
you would have to see what it looked like before, which is no problem, we can show you that. But when you see what's been done here, um, all the new buildings that he's put, a bathhouse, I'm proud of my bathhouse. I mean, it's the greatest shower, laundry. Well, the bathhouse is very important. I, I never did like going into a, we did a lot of camping and I never did like going into a bathhouse where you had to go back to your motor home and put on your gumboots to go into the bathhouse. So we wanted them clean and neat. And there's an 18 inch chaseway between the two rooms, the ladies and the men's side. So you can go down there and your plumbing's all in there. And that's also your heat. Even the wood carvings that are here, the pictures are taken and they're sent all around the world. And that's what they do. Uh, Things that are in here are pretty unique. You won't find anywhere else. You feel like you're walking into a resort, especially when you come around that corner when it's a nice sunny day the way it is. So it's, it's away from everything. A lot of times when you go to some of these places that have cabins and stuff, because we've done a lot of cabbing, um, you get by a lake, but then you're, you're still in the city. You still have the highway that's nearby. Um, you just, it feels like cabins in the woods, whereas this one actually feels like you're walking into a resort. It is so peaceful, so I can't describe the beauty of it all. You're here and you fall in love with. They're just so realistic on the numbers. So it, again, when you're selling something like this, you're kind of selling the dream. And one of the first things I'm thinking when I walk onto any property is who's going to be the ideal buyer. And so when you come in and you see something that's this laid back, you're kind of thinking in the back of your mind, okay, well, it's going to be one of those handshake agreements, lots of stuff under the table, nothing really accounted for. But then you find out that there's this amazing business that's behind it. So what gets me excited about this is that you've got the asset, you've got the land itself, which isn't going anywhere, it's lakefront. You've got all these upkept, really nice uh, cabins, buildings, um, you've got the store. And then on top of that, um, you've got this uh, business that pulls in over $350,000 a year in revenue. So even if you're coming in thinking, I've always wanted to live the dream, like I say, the businessman, they can still go through the financials. It's one of the few fishing resorts that I think you'll actually go through the financials and figure out this actually makes sense on a business level too. Right now is a, a really good time to get into the industry. It's uh, rebounding quite well um, from the downturn in the two th early 2000s. There's less capacity, so there's less resorts than there used to be, and so there's uh, a lot of demand for the ones that uh, are, are still running. This really is the last resort of its kind. In the winter time, there's ice skating, snowmobiling, cross country. We're close to Sun Peaks. A lot of people will stay here, do their campfire in the evenings, get up in the morning, do Sun Peaks, and they're back here again doing their ice skating by the campfire, and they just love it. A summertime, you are paddle boarding, paddle boats. We've got gas, electric boats. Beautiful place to swim. It's a gorgeous lake. It's got five gorgeous islands on it. A lot of people go to the island and swim off the islands as well as the dock. Uh, very good with kids. There's a sandy area here for them. Playground, which is awesome. And a lot of people love the playground. And lots of space, lots of room for them. The value is way higher than what we're actually listing at. But again, a lot of it comes down to wanting to see the business continue to run the way the business is run. They didn't want to put it at a price that was going to force someone that had to come in and start making concessions on what they've already built. You can just come in and run it exactly how they are and make money. That's a pretty unique scenario to be in. And the other huge asset, which is, is really could go undervalued, but Gloria and Dawn actually live on the neighboring property of this, and they're going to be sticking around, so they're willing to help out the new owner. Because you think about 20-something years of relationships with all of these clientele, you're going to want to know how to, how to do certain things around the property to, to keep things running the way that it actually is. And we built in, in 94 the house, and we moved up full-time on a separate piece of property. And uh, we don't plan on going anywhere. We're next door. If they need any help, they know where to come, and we're more than happy to help them which would be a good guideline for them in order to keep the business the way it's been going for this long. There's a lot of things here that are just small things that if you know what it is, it's not a problem. But if you don't know, you might look for days and then say, oh, that's what it was, you know. And uh, oh, this is our 28th season now in operation. So we worked out a lot of the bugs and, and we try to do everything proper to start with so you don't have those problems. I hate those two o'clock in the morning phone calls. 
<laughs> and we don't get them. All our lines, uh, we have very propane lines, very water lines, very electric lines, and uh, they're all done with a GPS satellite on where the lines are, and it's all mapped and color-coded. So the owner, of course, would get that copy. What I hear from a lot of our owners is, is really the connection they get a lot of the customers or repeat clientele and so you know new owners may not realize that when they come in but very soon once they start meeting the families and stuff who have been coming there for generations they really start to get what what running a fishing resort is all about. Well, most people that are here that's been here, um, they retired and then they don't leave until they get ill or they pass on. That's the way they leave here. We have a, a list actually of people waiting, so it's, it's not a problem. As soon as the site becomes empty, and we have lost quite a few people. When I say lost, they've passed away. And of course that changes everything. Uh, we've never been not full. It's quite rare. Uh, Knuff Lake's quite unique in, in its size. A lot more, a lot of resorts are quite small, and so what we see is, is much more. You know, the resorts that do come up for sale are, are the smaller resorts. So a much larger resort like Knuff Lake, it's it's a pretty unique uh, opportunity, and uh, it's it's quite a unique resort. So I'm you know, hopefully that uh, it continues on being that tradition of being a fishing resort. Well, it is probably still one of the best family resort uh, opportunities in, in the southern third of the province. Uh, in an area that uh, is, is lush, it's green, you're going to see green coniferous trees and, uh, and, uh, and on a piece of water that is crystal clear and uh, supports a great population of fish. Well, I think somebody with, uh, that's looking for a bit of a lifestyle uh, and also with an income. And probably, like me, I was only 43, so I knew there was quite a few years left and you had got to do something, you know. So if you can do something that you love to do, that's definitely the way to, to go about it. So we've been here since the early 1900s and, and uh, had numerous owners up at Knuff Lake there. Uh, Don and Gloria are by far the most efficient operators up there and, and they've done a wonderful job developing that place and, uh, and looking after it and uh, making it a great place for a, a vacation. It's so spiritual. It feels like home. It, 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 I think if you would even talk to some of my customers, they'll tell you the same thing. And they're here to stay. Even if Don and Gloria aren't here, they're here to stay. So I deal with a lot of sellers, and one of the things that stood out to me and I admired most about Gloria and Don is that when you get into areas like this where you're listing a property that was 20 years uh, labor of love like it is, um, a lot of times you get the, the price and then the sellers always want to tack on goodwill. What's kind of neat about this is that they're they're such astute business people that they were actually able to detach from the emotion, turn the tables from the perspective of the buyer and say, okay, what's a buyer realistically going to see value on, on this property? Um, so what we did is we just broke it down really simply um, so it made sense. We evaluated the business, the assets and the land all separately and came up with a price based on that. As simple and straightforward as it can get on an evaluation. So like I was saying earlier, I mean, any, any business owner coming in that wants to live the dream doesn't actually have to pay for goodwill because they can justify logically the purchase price on this so that gets me excited. Uh, you know you dri drive up to that lake and in the morning and it's glass calm you can see dragonflies and damselflies flying around over the riparian vegetation and you'll see trout dimpling and rising and porpoising and it's uh, over crystal clear water with nice light colored shoals and drop-offs and it it's an extremely inviting description of, of some place to go fishing. I'm proud of what we've accomplished. 
you look around and you can see what we've accomplished and what's here compared to others, what they have as far as resorts go. Well, I think I'm most proud of bringing it back to life. You know, like I said, when you first came here, I couldn't hardly look at this end of it. It was so bad. But, you know, Mother Nature had done great on that end. It was carved by a glacier, so it left uh, shale islands, five shale islands, you know, so it's, it's a little unique for a small lake. And uh, we felt we would like, to, I always wanted to bring it back to life as a, a going concern. And we felt we've done that now. And, and like I said, I'm 70, so it's time, you know. <laughs>